Hello, YouTubers. I would like to take as a point of departure today Romans 10, 9, actually Romans 10, 9 to 11. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Now I, I bring this up because perhaps I was, uh, some, my remarks yesterday, uh, yesterday being February 1st, and today being February 2nd, 2013. Perhaps my remarks yesterday might have been constrained as somewhat anti-Roman Catholic. Well, they're not anti-Roman Catholic qua Christians who are Roman Catholic. By no means. My son and daughter-in-law and grandson are Roman Catholic. Well, as is my ex-wife. But, um, uh, it is uh, probably properly construed to be uh, anti-Roman Catholic Church, small c church, as in terms of institutional church, small c church, um, perhaps more properly thought of as an organization with rules that they try to enforce and so forth, than... Uh, anti-Roman Catholic Church, large C Church, as as you know, a subset of the large C Church, uh, uh, the believers who are indeed uh, part of and merged with the body of Christ. You know, very much as in the marriage analogy, you know, the church being the bride of Christ and Christ being the head of the church. So, uh, <clears throat> my my beef with the Roman Catholic Church small c church has nothing at all to do with the idea of, of uh, uh, Roman Catholic Church large c church as a body of believers uh, that are a subset of the larger body of believers large c church. Uh, I'm sure that could have been misunderstood and perhaps even this now is being misunderstood. Um, but you know, a lot of this has to do with ecclesiology, and I think I think certainly the Roman Catholic Church and the Orthodox churches um, spend a lot more time emphasizing ecclesiology than do the Protestant churches or denominations, if you will. Um, Yes, we're all, you know, all, all people who believe are part of the church, large C church. Um, generally, you know, those who wish to get involved in, in organized slash institutional religion uh, become involved in uh, either, in the case of Protestants with various denominations or sects, SEC, TSs, if you will, or you're a Roman Catholic, or you are a member of one of the national Orthodox churches. Uh, these are all institutions, you know, organizations. Um, but you know, as we pray for those who believe but are unknown to us, uh, you know, we acknowledge that there are people who believe in and you know, meet the criteria of Romans 10, 9 to 11, as I just, as I just read them, that indeed uh, do form or are part of the membership of the larger capital C church. 
Uh, and hence, you know, part of the bride of Christ. You know, now, I, I'm not big on this marriage analogy. I, I, you know, that's that's been dragged to death, and it's being, you know, flogged to death in terms of this whole gay marriage stuff, which is, you know, believe you me, I, you know, I have no problem with the idea that marriage is between a man and a woman. You know, it's the tax code that's messed up all this civil union stuff that is being conflated with the word marriage. But um, uh, the idea that a person who is not a member of a particular organizational church is not a Christian and not worthy to be in communion with other Christians just because they're not members of a particular organizational church uh, or have had the various functionaries of that organizational church baptize them or offer them communion or approve of them. That's just nonsense. And I'm saying that in all love. I really am. I'm not trying to be sarcastic about that. Uh, so if people found what I said offensive yesterday, well, this is a clarification of that. Now, having said that, here we are today on February 2nd, Candlemas Day, the feast of the presentation of our Lord in the temple, in which, you know, Simeon gave his wonderful benediction. Anna got involved in this. Mary and Joseph, you know, were presented with yet other mysteries to ponder about. You know, what do we have on our hands here? What do we have on our hands here? Um, it's it's all part of this wonderful continuum. Luke Luke really certainly emphasizes a lot more of that that sort of human family story than uh, obviously the other ones do. John's my favorite, but that's okay. I mean, I, I have a very high Christology. Uh, still, what a great scene, you know, these, these two very sanctified, holy, older folks coming up and taking part in this, this presentation as required by Jewish law. It's, it had to have been a, an awe-filled and awful and mysterious and mysteryful experience for all involved. And a release for Simeon, clearly, because he said now he can depart in peace. And... Uh, when that time comes, we can all hope that we have that, that complete reassurance that we are now allowed to depart in peace. Uh, I think I'm going to stop now. I think I've clarified any misunderstandings. Or, if I haven't, then they're just going to have to stay out there. Alrighty now. Bye-bye.